Welcome to 2's, 5's and 10's. In this lesson I'm learning to work out multiplication facts from what I know about 2's, 5's and 10's. Well, over here you can see I've got some marble. And these marbles are split into two groups. There's a top group and a bottom group. And you can see both groups have got the same amount of marbles in them. So I could use my doubles to help me work out how many marbles there are. I could go 4 plus 4, and we know that that equals 8. But I know that I can also use my 2 times tables to work out doubles. I can work out 2 groups of 4, which equals 8. I got the 2 groups of 4 because there's 1 groups, 2 groups, and there's 4 in each group. And if we go down a bit, you can see we've got another question here. Here I've got some more marbles. Again, they're split into two groups. I can see that there's uh, 6 in each of these groups, so I could work out 6 plus 6. But I know that uh, using my 2 times tables is the same as working out doubles. So I could go 2 groups of 6, and that equals 12. So you can see here I've been using my 2 times tables to help me work out doubles. Now let's have a look at our 10 times tables and see if we can spot any patterns there. Here I've got one row of 10 counters, or one group of 10, which is equal to 10, or if we write it out, it looks like that, 10. Now you can see I've got two groups of 10, or 20 counters. And now I've got three groups of 10, or 30 counters. And now you can see I've got four groups of 10, or 40 counters. Now hopefully you're noticing a bit of a pattern here. All of these are ending in T. Now I'm going to put in some more groups and see if that pattern holds for all of them. And you can see that they all end in T. Now here you can see I've got a large group of counters. I've got one, two, three, four rows, and in each of those rows there's ten counters. So I could work out how many counters there are by going four groups of ten, and I know that that equals forty. Now I can also see another way that I could split these counters up. I could split them so that they're in groups of 5. So let's count up how many groups of 5 I can see. Well there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So I know that 8 groups of 5 must also equal 40 counters. Now let's see if there's another way that I could split these counters up. What about if I just split these counters in half, so I had two groups? So you can see I've now got two groups, so I can write that here, two groups of 20. And I know 20 plus 20 equals 40, so two groups of 20 equals 40. So you can see that four groups of 10, eight groups of 5, and two groups of 20 all give us the same answer. Let's have a look at one more question. Here you can see I've got a large group of counters and they've been split into three rows. And in each of those rows, there's 10 counters. So I could work out how many there are by going three groups of 10, and that equals 30. Notice that T sound on the end. Now I could also use my doubles to help me work out how many there are. If I put a line right down here, I'm splitting this amount in half. So I've got two groups with the same amount of counters on each side. So I can see that there are two groups of 15. And I know that 15 plus 15 is 30. Now I could also split these in a different way again. I could split them into groups of five like I did last time. So they if I put some lines through here, you can see I've now split my counters into groups of five. 
and I can see now that there are six groups of five counters. And I'm great with my five times tables and I know that six times five equals 30. So notice how three times 10, two times 15, and six times five all give us the same answer. Well, I hope you found this lesson helpful. For more help, check out teachertools.co.nz.